Hey, what's up, guys? Paul here. Welcome to Hub City Drones and Gadgets. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel, you guys. I do appreciate it. And if for some reason you have not done it yet, hit that subscribe and that notify button. You don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos, do you? Today, you guys, I got a good one for you. We're going to check out ATOP's W80 GPS drone. This is a pretty impressive GPS drone, you guys. Four powerful brushless motors. It has a 4K UHD camera that sits on a two-axis gimbal adjustable from the controller, five gigahertz video transmission, and it also comes with two batteries for a total of, are you ready for this? 60 minutes of flight time, you guys. Perfect for beginners. It has all the fail safe features built right into it. You lose connection to the controller, low battery, drone gets too far away. This dude will automatically come back to where it took off from and land. No stress whatsoever, right? Something else you don't have to stress about, you guys, is the price. Right now on Amazon, under 400 bucks for this GPS drone. Great deal for it already, but check this out. ATOP has given me another W80 GPS drone to give away to you guys. What? All you gotta do, just leave me a comment on this video, and in a couple weeks, I'm gonna pick one of you guys and send you this drone absolutely free. Now that's a damn good deal, right? The link in the description as always right now. Let's go unbox this dude, check out everything we get with it. Then I'm gonna show you guys how to set it all up. Then. We'll put this dude in the air. We're going to give it a test flight and we're going to see what it can do. Let's go. All right, guys, what do you say we get this dude out of the box? Again, we're unboxing the ATOP Wolvi Pro W80 GPS drone. Here is the box it comes in. Super cool picture of the drone and the controller on one side. And you got a super cool picture of the drone and the camera on the back side. A folded up view over here on one side with the controller. Very cool. But let's get this dude out of the box and check him out. Super cool. Very cool case. It is a hard case, soft sided, nice material on it. Very cool. Got our ATOP logo here. On the front, we have a nice carrying handle right here. Feels pretty durable. And dual zippers. Check it out. All right, guys. Here we go. You ready? Ta da! -dum. I say we go for the top first. Keep you in suspense a little bit. This box, I believe, is going to be our manual. And look at that. It is our manual. So you do get one full user manual and one quick start guide. Not sure what that was. It just fell out. But both manuals, the quick start guide and the manual are very well detailed. I really like these manuals. They did a great job on them. As you can see everything is in there. Change your propellers, your SD card. It's got a diagram of the controller and the app in here. Always read your manual, guys. Don't charge your batteries. Put your drone in the air before you know what it can and can't do and how everything works. Or chances are you're going to crash and ruin your good drone. Don't be a drone dummy. All right, let's see. Next, it looks like we have our accessories, as I like to call it, our goodie bag. So I'm going to just dump it all out right here. We'll check it out. See what we got in here. It's all sticking to the bag. So I can see right here, we do get one full complete set of hinged propellers. Really cool, they're hinged propellers. I love hinged propellers on a drone. And check these propellers out, you guys. They're actually pretty massive. On the back of the propeller, not sure if I can get it in the camera where you can see it. Read me right there. There is an A and a B propeller. Make sure you put your propellers on the A and B arm, or it's probably not going to be very pretty when it flies. And you also get one complete replacement set of screws. 
these screws, I'm not going to take them out of the bag. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but there's actually like a blue uh, film on the threaded part. And I believe that's probably going to be like a sticky glue, which is really cool. It'll keep the screws from vibrating loose during flight and stuff like that. So that's really cool. One USB charging cable. That would be for your controller more than likely. And one handy dandy drone propeller removal tool. And this time it looks like it's actually a hex uh, screwdriver instead of a Phillips head or a flathead. That's pretty cool. I've never seen one of those. That's cool. All right, here we go. Check it all out, you guys. Very well packaged. I love the form fitted uh, pockets for the drone, the controller, all that stuff. So we're going to do our batteries first. Actually, no, we're not. I want to show you guys this first. This is really cool, you guys. This is your battery charging hub. And I was really impressed when I saw this. But check this out, you guys. That's your charging hub. Now, you do only get one charging hub and two batteries. So you do have to charge each battery individually. But this charging hub is super cool, you guys. You can plug it in here with a USB cord. It's a Type-C, 5-volt, 2-amp charger box. And you put battery right here. I'll show you how it goes on here in just a minute. Because now we're going to take our batteries out. Both the same. You get two of them. So I'm only going to open one and show it to you. But they are an 11.4 volt. Come on. I'm ripping my box. 11.4 volt. 2500 MAH LiPo drone engine. Or LiPo battery. Drone engine sounds a whole hell of a lot cooler though. Very cool. You have your connectors right here to push and take it out of your battery compartment on the drone. But look at the design on this control on this battery, you guys. This is really cool. You have your power button here. You can press it, turn it on. You have four LED lights, naturally 25% per battery level, all the way up to your 100%. And you just long press it, and that will turn it off. Very cool battery. You can charge each battery with a 5-volt, 2-amp charger box with the charging hub. And you just pop your battery on here like so. Remember, again, one battery at a time. These lights will fluctuate up and down while your battery is charging. When it is fully charged, they'll all be solid green, and then they will shut off, which is really cool. Charge time for each battery, you guys, is four to five hours. Now, that's a completely drained battery, so if it's not completely drained, it won't take you that long. But you are looking at at least a decent four hours per battery, so eight hours total. So I would absolutely recommend charging them the day before you're going to go flying <laughs> so you're not waiting around for them to finish charging. You do get, though, 30 minutes of flight time per battery. Now, that's hovering, no wind, all that other good stuff. So technically, you're going to probably get more or less 27 to 28 minutes. That's still a damn good amount of time to fly your drone with two batteries. You're getting almost an hour of flight time. That's super cool. And I like that the batteries can just store right in here in this compartment. So you can keep them in the box to protect them or they'll just fit in here right like that. Same with your charging hub. That will go right in here like so too. A little finagling and you got it in there. Check that out. Everything has a home. Pretty cool. All right. Let's check out this controller, you guys. I'm going to shut that up so we can see it. But this is our controller. You do get a little uh, how to use charge type uh, strap around it. Again, telling you to use the USB cord it came with and the 5 volt 2 amp charger box. But very cool. We got some protective nubs right here on our joysticks. It is a 2.4 gigahertz controller. It does have a rechargeable battery built inside, which is really cool. It's a 3.7 volt 500 mAh LiPo battery. 90 minutes to fully charge your controller. Um, and I'm sure with that size of a battery, I couldn't find it anywhere, but you'll more than likely get a couple of hours of usage time out of it. So you won't have to worry about it dying on you when you're going through at least your two batteries that you have. Oh, and real quick, the charging hub, I'll look and see. They, it's possibility they may sell just the charging hub. So you could probably order a second one and then you can charge both batteries at the same time. I'll look into that. I haven't had time to do it yet. If I can find one, I'll put the link in the description back to our controller. So we have two working antennas, very cool. On the top here, we have our video record button. Over here is our picture taken button. This wheel on this side is your camera angle adjustment. You can uh, adjust the angle, negative 90 degrees to zero degrees. 
Over here is your speed wheel. This is pretty cool. Usually it's a button or you got to press the controller in to do it. This one is actually a wheel. Just turn it left, you know, slide it left or right like so, and it'll change its speed one to speed two. Right here it says pull out because this is our secret cell phone holder compartment. And you just pull it out like so. It will click like that. Click it forward and check it out, you guys. There's your cell phone holder. I love the way it's positioned with the antennas because you can tilt them up toward the phone. Kind of like so, which is very cool. So the phone doesn't get in the way. I like this holder. It has rubber grips on top and bottom, so your phone's not going to slide around. And check out this uh, grip. A grip. Check out this stretch size, guys. This is a pretty decent size stretch, so it will hold a really decent size cell phone. That is pretty cool. You want to close it up? All you do is click it backward. It will make a pretty decent click. You heard that there? And then you just slide it down, pop it in, and you're good to go. On the bottom is your Type-C charger port. It even says right here for you, 5 volt, 2 amp charger box. And it has, check this out, you guys, grip sticks. Love a controller with grip sticks. It's so much easier to hold it, especially when you have the weight of the phone on the top of it. Absolutely love that. On the front of our controller, we have our joysticks. These actually feel really good. I kind of like these grippy nubs on the top, too. They're not too pokey, uh, so they don't irritate your thumbs and that when you're flying it. There's no lag or stickiness to them, so I like that. Very nice joysticks on here. On the front, we have our LCD screen. Over here is our power on and off switch. And you power it on and check it out. We can take this protective cover off so we can see it a little better probably. You do have that film on there, so make sure you take it off. I guess you don't have to, but you can see it a whole lot better. Check that screen out, you guys. That is so cool. All your information is on here. Just note... The bars on the right here, they're just for show to, I guess, even out the display. The one on the left, though, this is your signal range, so that is really cool. You have your drone battery level, your controller battery level is here. And I like the fact that your GPS shows you when it's on or if you have it off. And it actually shows you the number of satellites you're connected to. That is really cool. Mode 1 and 2 for your controllers and your speed, low and high. Then you have your height and distance in meters. That is really cool, you guys. Down below here, we have our motor lock and unlock button. And then we have, oh, everything froze up because it's looking for the drone. Let me shut this off while we go through here. So on the right-hand side here, this is our one key takeoff and our one key land. Down here, this little symbol here, this is our gyro calibration button. That's pretty cool. You don't have to do the joysticks in a certain pattern to do it. Just press this. It does your gyro calibration. I'm going to show you that in the setup. Right here, the ever important return to home button. If you have a problem with the drone, lose sight of it or whatever else, all you got to do, you guys, hit that button. The drone's going to come right back to you and land where it took off from. Love return to home features on these uh, GPS fail-safe drones. That, my friends, is our controller very cool and we're just going to fold it back up your antennas fold like so and they actually lock onto each other so you just line them up and in they go like that it's folded up and we're good to go back into its home in the box again i love the way everything is form fitted all right guys the time has come we are going to check this dude out and I'm going to get this case and stuff out of our way. So we have all the room we need to look at this dude. This drone is massive, you guys. I love the size of it. It is really big. We'll get our uh, propeller guards off here from uh, shipping. These are just on there for shipping, naturally. And let's see if we can pull them out of here like so. There we go. Probably would have been easier if I opened it up. But what the heck, we'll do it that way. All right, check this dude out, you guys. We're going to unfold it like this. Check it out. Wow, I really like the way the arms lock into place. They pop in there really good. You can hear that right there. Look at that. That's cool. And look how massive this thing is, you guys. It's a huge drone. This is really cool. Again, we have our hinged propellers on your drone. It's A, B, and then opposite, A, B. Same with the propellers, your A propellers on your A arm, B on your B arm. But I really like the way this thing looks, you guys. Our battery compartment on the top, and we're gonna take our battery that I put away, which I should have left out. 
and it just pops right in the top like so check this out you guys it just goes right on in and it locks in really good you got to give it a good press don't press on your camera or anything make sure you don't mess that gimbal up but check it out it's in there the weight on this drone you guys is 19.22 ounces 545 grams so you do have to register him with the faa it's not a big deal the link is in the description cost you five bucks you get a registration sticker slap it well not a sticker but you get a registration number slap it on your drone i also have a link in there where you can order pre-printed labels that have your registration number on it your name phone number email if you want you can customize them great company really fast shipping on them as well and i like the fact the stickers stick on and when you need to pull them off for whatever reason they don't ruin the side of the drone or leave any stickiness on there. It's really cool. Don't forget, you also now, all recreational drone pilots have to take the trust test. That's the recreational UAS safety test, trust test. Not really a test. You can't really fail it, you guys. You just go through. It's like four sections. Answer a few questions at the end. If you miss a question, it'll let you go back, find the answer, come back, answer the questions again. You can move on to the next chapter. But that is now required by all recreational drone pilots. So let's check this dude out some more. So the range on our drone is 1,000 meters or 3,280 feet. That's a great range for a beginner drone. You wouldn't be able to see it that far. Remember, you have to keep it in your VLOS visual line of sight anyway. But that's a really great range. Your FPV range is 800 meters or 206 or 2,624 feet. Great range, especially for a 5G video transmission. That's a really good range uh, for this type of drone. On the bottom of our drone, check this out, you guys. You have your do not touch the gimbal. You don't want to offset that gimbal. So you try not to touch it as much as possible. But check this out, you guys. We actually have a working optical flow sensor right here on the bottom. We have some LED lights here. and looks like we got another little sticker thing on here covering that up that's cool we're going to take that off we don't need that on there right now but you get some bright led lights it looks like we got a vent here as a breather vent uh could even be a small fan in there to cool the battery that's cool we got some more breather vents right in here on the side over here is our sd card slot right in here is where this sticker is you can use up to 128 gigabyte sd card and I would recommend getting a class 10 U3 or higher uh, that can handle the 4K video because without the SD card in here, your video is going to be saved to your phone more than likely at 720p, but at best, it'll save it to 1080p. You'll still get your photos and your videos, but your videos aren't going to be true 4K unless you have that SD card in there. And remember, format your SD card in a FAT32 format. This dude is just awesome looking, you guys. You have your instructions on each arm, how to fold it and unfold. You can only do it one way or they will hit each other and they won't open up. But I absolutely love this design on this thing. And from the weight of holding it right now and the thickness and size of these propellers, I would honestly say this has probably got a good level 5, level 6 wind resistance to it. That's pretty cool, man. All right, let's check out this camera. Our gimbal cover, it just pops off like so. Check it out. And there is our gimbal there is our 4k camera you guys it is a true 4k hd camera it has a field of view of 90 degrees which is a pretty decent field of view it is adjustable again it's adjustable from negative 90 to zero degrees so it will look straight down and give you a great bird's eye view that is really cool your pics and your videos are all stored to the sd card in 4k Pictures are always going to be in 4K, your pics are in JPEG, and your videos are in MP4. And right here, check it out, I forgot to show you guys this, we have LED lights. There's one on each leg, and then you have two right here on the back. These are also status LED lights. They'll explain to you what the drone is doing or not doing uh, in calibration and during setup and during flight. And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute, because you guys, we have just unboxed the ATOP Wolvi. W80 Pro drone. This thing is super cool, super massive drone too, you guys. I say we get him set up because I'm really excited to put this dude in the air and fly him. So now I'm going to show you guys how to set him up. Let's go.
All right, guys, let's get our drone set up so we can get this dude in the air and check him out. I'm really excited to fly this drone. I cannot wait. But anyway, we're going to set him up. First thing you need to do naturally is you got to power on your drone and pair the controller. Really cool. It's a self-pairing controller. You're going to press your power button just like so. It boots up like that. I love that sound. Then you're going to power on your controller. Remember, the switch is on the side. And check it out. It's almost an instant pairing, which is really cool. Sometimes it takes a few seconds for them to find each other. This one, not so much. Our camera just leveled itself out. We are paired. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to calibrate your drone. What you're going to do first is your compass calibration. Um, I would recommend doing this. I do it every time I change the battery on the drone. You don't necessarily have to do the compass part of it that often. I'm just in the habit of doing it. It's really easy to do and, and not a big deal at all. To do our compass calibration, you can do it through the controller or you can do it through the app. I'll show you that when we open up the app here in a minute. You're going to take both joysticks. You're going to push them up and inward. Hold them there for a few seconds. The lights on the drone will start to blink. The controller will beep. Here we go. Up and in. There they go. You can see now they're blinking quickly. Now this is our horizontal part of our compass calibration. You're going to take your drone. You're going to hold it. It's best to do this about three feet off the ground. If you hold it right about chest high or so and do this, you're, it's pretty good. You're going to want to do it. It doesn't matter which way you go. And you're going to spin it somewhere between two and three full turns. The controller will beep. And our lights will stop uh, flashing. They're going to go to slow just like so. Now you're going to do the vertical part of it. And you're just going to take the drone. You're going to hold it upright. Don't mind the camera. It does do a little bit of a dance, but it will level itself out. Then you're going to spin your drone this way. And again, doesn't matter left or right. And our LEDs will turn solid as soon as the vertical part of this calibration is done. You heard there our controller beep twice. I usually finish my turn if I'm in the middle of one. And... Voila, our drone is compass calibrated. Our camera has leveled itself back up. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is the gyro calibration part of the calibration. Flat level surface, make sure you always do this on a flat level surface. If it's not level enough, chances are it may not even let you calibrate it. Again, really easy to do, you guys. You're going to press this button right here on the lower left of your controller. You can do this part of it in the app as well if you want. But you just tap this, our lights will blink really quick. And that's it. We are completely calibrated and we're good to go. You can see here it has found five GPS signals. This number will go up. I do believe it has to be seven, eight or higher in order for it to be in safe GPS mode for your fail safes and all that to work properly and for it to lift off and fly. It will tell you and I'll show you in the app. It'll say ready to fly when it's ready to fly. But now that we are completely paired and calibrated, let's go ahead and connect to the drone's Wi-Fi signal. Um, you do have to connect to the Wi-Fi signal in order to use the app. That's how the app communicates with the drone and how your video feed is transferred to your app on your phone. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so open up your Wi-Fi settings on your phone or your tablet. You can use your tablet. Granted, it won't fit in your cell phone holder on your controller, but you can definitely use a tablet as well. As long as it will connect to a Wi-Fi signal, you can use that device, you guys. Um, it's not internet, so you don't need to be subscribed or have an internet provider in order to do this. Um, even your phone doesn't necessarily need a cell phone provider on it as well. If you have an old phone laying around, you can make it your drone phone. As long as it can connect to a Wi-Fi signal, you're good to go. In your available network, you'll see it pop up. It's right there, W80. That second set of numbers there will change for every drone. We're going to tap on it. The first time you do this, you guys, it may tell you you're connected with no internet. That's perfectly okay. Or it may ask you if you want to keep the internet connection or switch to cellular data. Keep the internet connection. That's what we want. We're connected without internet. That's perfect. We're going to hit done. And now we're going to open up the app and check out the app. Okay, so the app you want to download is the Atop View app. I put a picture of it right there on the screen so you can see what the icon looks like. You want to download that. It's Google Play or the Apple Store. It is free, of course. 
Once you have it downloaded and you're connected to the Wi-Fi and you're completely calibrated, the next thing you're going to want to do is open the app. There is our main screen. We are connected. Give it a couple seconds. It will actually find the right drone that you have and it will connect to it. You can see here, this is our main interface of the beginning of our app. You have your device at the bottom, your gallery. That is where your pictures are. After sale takes you to the ATOP website. We're going to hit start fly. Now, the first one you come to is introduction for beginners. This is all the things you don't want to do and avoid while you're flying your drone. Pretty cool they put that in there. Hit next. This is a blueprint or diagram of the app. It shows you what every icon on the app means. Hit next again. And we should have picture and check it out. We do. Now you can see here GPS signal searching. The drone cannot take off when GPS signal searching. Please wait patiently. So right above that, that blue shaded line says connected signal searching. Once this reaches a safe number of satellites, again, I think it's anywhere between seven, eight or nine ish, right around in there. That will change colors and it will say ready to fly and you're good to go. But I want to show you guys this camera just real quick. We're going to check it out when we get it up in the air too, but look how clear that camera is. That is a really great picture. I'm really impressed with this camera, you guys. That is awesome. All right, so real quick, I'm not going to go over everything on the app. I do want to point out a couple of things and some settings that are important to know. Up above the top here, on the right side of connected, that is your drone's signal strength. Then you have your satellite signal strength. The next one is uh, your battery for your drone. That is your drone's battery level. That little wheel, you're going to want to tap this, you guys, because inside here are all your hidden uh, settings for your drone. When you first get the drone, don't be alarmed when you're flying it if it only goes 98 feet away and 98 feet high. There's nothing wrong with your drone. You need to go into this setting right here, and you need to take it off a novice mode or beginner mode, it's called. Once you take that off, you can slide your sliders all the way up to wherever you want the drone to go. Like so. We can get it all the way up where we want it to go. Hit save. It will save that for the next time you fly your drone. You won't have to do that again. Below that, this is our point of interest radius. Anywhere, the default 16 feet. You can go anywhere from 16 feet. Check this out. All the way up to... 164 foot radius that's a big radius for a point of interest that's pretty cool we're going to put ours back down i'm going to save it if you save it it will stay at that radius the next time you go to use that as well below that this is where we can calibrate the drone you have your horizontal and your compass calibration below that one this is cool it actually has a gimbal calibration feature on it so if you're flying it the gimbal seems a little too shaky or it's crooked not lining up straight all you got to do is go in here, hit gimbal calibration. You also have your roll and your pitch adjustment where you can fine tune the tilt. You can see there our camera is tilting a little bit and we'll straighten it up. But super cool. We're going to go back in here. You can reset them all as well. Below that, this is where you can change your metrics. You can go inches or miles per hour or you can do a metric which is meters per second. This will change your feet and your height to feet and your miles per hour, of course, to miles per hour, your speed. Um, if you don't want to try to figure out what the metrics is, it's really great that you can put it into feet. We're going to tap and get out of there. That's your settings, you guys. It's really that easy. Again, great for beginners. All right, so below our setting wheel, that's your SD card. Uh, that will show you how big your card is, how much room you have left on your SD card. I don't have one in the drone yet. If you tap this, it will let you format your SD card. So you can format it right in the drone. Below all that is your camera and your video button. Really cool. It has separate buttons for them. So you're not, you know, fumbling around to hit the button to change it back and forth from video and camera. When you hit camera, it turns it red. Down below the file, that is your videos and photos that are saved to the app. They'll all be right in here. The next one, this is your zoom. This is pretty cool. It actually has a really decent zoom to it. You can tap the, uh, Magnifying glasses there, it'll zoom it in and out. Tap it again, it'll get rid of it. This next one, this is really cool, you guys. You can actually put uh, filters on the camera while you're recording it in air. That is really cool. There's all kinds of different ones you can do, too. That's a really neat feature. Next to that, you can see here on the bottom, 
These are our height, distance, our vertical speed, and our horizontal speed. And you can now see they are in feet and feet per second. Really cool. This is your little map of where you are versus the drone over here in the lower left. The next one, these are all your intelligent features. We'll check these out when we test fly this dude. You have your return to home above that and your one key takeoff and land. One more thing I want to show you guys is right up here on the top next to home and connect right in between those. This is your flight records. This is really cool because it shows you all your flight records that you've done with the drone. You have the mileage, the speed, the height. Really cool feature. I like that. That's pretty much the app, you guys. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory, and we'll go over it during our test flight, which is what we're going to go do right now. So let's go get this little dude in the air and check him out. Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to check out Atop's W80 GPS drone. I'm going to unlock the motors, and we're going to get this dude in the air and check him out. Here we go. Ooh, listen, them motors wind up. Here we go. Joystick lift off. So nice, easy, steady takeoff. He's got a good GPS lock there. He's not doing the toilet bowl effect. You put this drone up and he's swirling around in the air. You need to land it and recalibrate it. That's what they call the uh, toilet bowl effect. So I'm gonna get him over here, Lavelle. I'll let you guys hear these motors and check him out. Then we'll check out the speeds and the camera and the intelligent features. See our LED lights are on on the bottom. That's cool. The gimbal works really well. Check it out. It's perfectly straight, forward, backwards. That is cool. So we got a little bit of wind coming in, but that'll be good. It'll give us a little wind resistance level test on this dude too. But those motors sound great, you guys. That's awesome. All right, I say we check out the speeds on this dude. All right, we're in speed one. So this is speed one. Here we go. Oh, he's got a pretty decent turn on speed one. Look how far he turned. But comfortable speed, definitely a comfortable speed. Check that out. All right, so let's this camera, get this camera just a little bit. I'm going to show you guys what speed one looks like through the camera with this gimbal. Check this out, you guys. So unfortunately, when you adjust the camera, it does beep the whole time. So that's something you'll have to get used to. There's no shutting it off, unfortunately. But here's speed one through the camera on the drone. And check this out. We'll turn. And look how still that gimbal stays, you guys. Awesome. Great looking camera too. We'll shoot him up here in a couple minutes. I'm going to show you guys the camera from up about 100 feet or so. All right, we're going to check out speed two. Well, he definitely turns quicker in speed two. <laughs> All right, back him up here a little bit. All right, guys, here we go. This is speed two. Let's check it out. Oh, definitely quicker. He turns better on speed two, too. <laughs> so speed one, he's got a pretty wide turn. So just keep that in mind when you're flying him. But speed two is pretty damn comfortable, too. Look at that, you guys. cool 
see if I can do a little flyby for you guys and you can see speed two a little better. Check this out. All right, speed two through the camera. Let's see how well this gimbal holds up on speed two. So here we go. Check it out. That's just a great picture. And look how steady the camera stays. Even if I turn him, look at that. That is awesome. Here he comes. So I like the way he breaks or slows down. He's got a little drag, but not much at all. That's pretty cool. All right, you guys, I'm going to shoot him up about 100 feet or so in the air. I'll spin him around, let you guys see what the FPV camera looks like from up hard. Check this out, you guys. Oh, we're only at 80 something feet. Let's go up a little higher. What the heck? There we go. 115. I'm bringing this camera down a little bit. Check that out. Not that much. All right. I'm going to put him back in speed one and I'm just going to spin him so you guys can check out this camera. Check this out, you guys. Nice rotation on speed one for filming. That is great. And the wind's kind of picking up, but look how steady that camera is staying, you guys. That is super cool. Check that out. That's awesome. And then we'll check out the range on the camera. Check this out all the way down. There's our landing pad. There I am, a little bit in the picture. And then we'll go up. Check that out, you guys. That's cool. I'm impressed with this camera. Nice, easy descent on speed one, too. That's awesome. And I don't know if you guys can hear the wind in my mic, but it is definitely picking up, and he's doing a great job with it, too. That's cool. All right. So let's get him spun around here a little bit. And we're going to open our app and we are going to try the follow me mode and see how that works. So let's open up our app and we'll do follow me. All right, we're going to tap it and we're going to hit follow me. You got to slide it to confirm it. That's what we're going to do. Oh, there he goes. He backed up a little bit. So I'm going to walk around and we'll see how well he keeps up with me and how good this works. Let's check it out. So yeah, he's doing great. Forward, he's following me, he's keeping up. Let's go back the other way and freak him out. That's great, check it out, he'll go backwards. That's cool, and now to do the, finish the follow me, just hit that little red X here on the left. It's done, you're out of it. So the next thing I want to try, well, let's get him out here a little bit more. This is probably not a good idea to do him right here. But I'm going to back him up some. I love the way these motors sound, you guys. These are some kick-ass motors on this drone. This is awesome. All right. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to put him over me. What you want to do is put the drone over or as close to the point of interest you want it to do it. I'm going to put him over me, then I'm going to hit it, and we'll see how good he does. So here we go. All right, so that's probably good. Let's open it up. Surround mode. We're going to confirm it. Now he's going to back up. Remember, you can set this radius in your settings. And he's going to start going and check this out. And I really like that you can adjust the camera up and down. I didn't quite have them over me, I guess. Let me get in the middle of them here. There we go. Check them out.
And you can also raise and lower him while he's doing this, which is super cool. See here, we'll bring him down. Check this out. Bring the camera up. Oh, that's great right there. That's awesome. Let you guys see him doing his thing. It's a good speed too. It's not real fast, not too slow. It's almost a perfect speed for a point of interest. He'll keep doing this until you stop it. That's cool. I'm impressed. So we just hit the X again. And you can see here we got control of the drone again, so we're good to go. All right, guys, we're going to shoot him straight out and we are going to check out the return to home. These are one of the features I really like to check out on these GPS drones just to see how close he'll get to the landing pad. Now, remember, it's not going to be exact. He may not even hit the landing pad, but the return to home will definitely get him back to you so you can get your drone back. So we're going to take him out. I'm going to take him down out here a little bit and I'm going to leave him kind of low so you guys can see him raise up to the height. So that's probably good right there. Yeah, we'll stop him right there. All right, I'm gonna hit return to home on the controller. Here we go. Oh, there he goes. I hope you guys can see him. He's going up. That's cool. I'm gonna switch over to the camera now so you guys can see what it looks like when he's coming back home. Well, he comes back quick too. All right, so he's still backing up. You see our landing pad is there. He is right there. He's going to be pretty damn close, but he's not going to hit it, I don't think. I think he's going to be off just a tad bit. Oh, look at that. He's correcting himself. Check that out, it's not bad at all. Less than what, six feet from the landing pad? That's really cool. There you go, guys. That's Atop's W80 GPS drone. This little dude is awesome, you guys. I would absolutely recommend getting this drone if you're a beginner and you're wanting to move up to a GPS drone. The intelligent features work. The fail-safe features work too. Everything worked perfect on it. And you really can't go wrong. Under 400 bucks on Amazon right now. Remember the links in the description and don't forget, leave a comment on this video because remember, I'm going to give an ATOP W80 GPS drone away here in a couple weeks. That's going to do it for this video, you guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, hit that subscribe and that notify button for me. Have fun. Stay safe out there, you guys. And remember, don't be a drone dummy.